Good afternoon, everyone. Mike Winkler here, and I want to take a couple minutes, and I wanted to talk about where your data is stored in QRadar. We've had the question come up a couple of times about where exactly is the data resident, right? Where's the original stored? Where's metadata? All of that good stuff. So starting with kind of the most basic scenario, when you're sitting on an all-in-one, right? Uh, QRadar all-in-one appliance is going to be a 31-something-something. Those numbers are almost always going to end in the model of hardware that they are attached to, right? So an 05 is the small one, a 24 is a couple of years old, but those are definitely still out there. There's 31s, 28s, 29s, and so forth. So those last two digits are the hardware model they sit on, the first two call it a console. In this case, it's an all-in-one, right? And this is where it gets a little confusing later on, but stay with me on this. And a 31SW is a software, which means you loaded that in whatever virtual machine or hardware that you supplied all by yourself. Now. Um, all of your logs and all of your metadata are stored in the all-in-one device, right? This is a particularly simple example, right? So all of your logs are there, um, as well as indexes that are built from your log, so metadata from it so it can be operated. And this is kind of the most basic crystalline scenario of it. But as soon as we get a little more complicated, right, I'm going to say, okay, I have a 31 console, but not an all-in-one, right? It's a little confusing where we make these names extremely similar. But I'm talking about a console that does not have an event or a flow processor on it. It's going to be a 31XX, but it's not going to have the all-in-one. And it can be all of those same hardware model numbers we talked about earlier. Okay, and into my console, I am adding an event processor. Fair enough. And this is first two numbers are 16. The last two can be any of that same number set. Um, the metadata and the indexes are stored on the console, right? So this is where I have abstracts of the data that are stored in the console so that we can resolve results quickly. So that when you tap on your console and you're like, oh, you know, show me everything that's happened in West Virginia in the last 30 minutes, that it resolves very quickly. We have created indexes from all this metadata. All of the original log data and a certain number of indexing are stored on the event processor. But this is where all the original data is. So if you were to lose a console, it would need to recreate those indexes, but no original data would be lost. Okay, so kind of moving on to make it even a bit more complicated is sometimes you have a distributed environment so that I want an event processor or several of them and then I want a number of event collectors, right? A collector is a small box, very often a virtual machine that lives where you're collecting, oh, 2,300 or 2,300 events per second but you don't want the data stored there, right? So an event collector is going to take the data, it's going to compress it, it's going to encrypt it, but unless it's lost connectivity with its coupled processor, it never stores the data, right? It goes into store and forward mode. So if you lose an event collector, um, you lose the ability to gather logs, which isn't good, but no original data is stored there. It's all moved on as soon as it can be to the event processor. The only exception to that is if it loses connectivity and then you lost it, but that's an unlikely circumstance, right? So taking our same example, and instead of talking about log events, if we're talking about NetFlows, metadata is still stored in the indexes in the console, same story with NetFlow that it is with log events. Now I could have a combined processor, right? A 17-something or an 18-something, right? Same logic about model numbers. All the original flow data in some metadata is stored on the flow processor, right? No big deal. And we can have a flow collector, right? What's called a QFlow box. Um, same numbers scheme as the event collectors, just to be confusing. And I can say that any of this flow data is going to be compressed and encrypted, set off to a flow processor. No original flow data is stored. So same logic, if you lose a console, you lose all of the indexes and all the metadata. But unless you lose that flow processor, no data is ever lost. And the same deal if we lose a flow collector, we lose the ability to collect those flows, but we don't lose any uh, stored data. Last example I wanted to talk about was data nodes, right? Same console, same event processor we were talking about a minute ago. But now there's the idea of um, what if I need more storage or more processing, right? Those event processors can be very big boxes, as much as 70 terabytes of storage. But I have folks that are asking for uh, much larger numbers than that. So I can have a data node that these can be 70 terabytes or even more of storage, but not just storage, right? It's also additional processors, additional CPU. So the entire load of event processing is distributed between the EP, the event processor, and its accompanying data node. 
And just for point of reference, you can have a couple of data nodes if you do need a colossal amount of storage. Okay, but the original log data, as it comes into that event processor, is distributed back and forth to the data node, so all of the load is equalized. So I can't tell you explicitly which logs are gonna be in the data node, which ones are gonna be in the event processor, because it's equalized depending on the load and what's coming from where, but I can tell you that all of the original data will be on that uh, event processor and its shared data node. And we can you know, ship it back to one place if you ever need to, but this is absolutely where your original data is. This is Mike Winkler, and we have been talking about where is my data in QRadar.